I'll just start. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> um, today I may not uh, conduct the entire one hour class, I mean lecture. Uh, instead, we'll have some discussion session as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, simply because, you know, um, I had a, uh, some workshop in the morning and then I had a class from 2.30 to 3.15 and then uh, now from 4 to 5. So I'll, I'll try my best, but if I can't, then um, we'll have a small discussion. Uh, instead of the lecture okay so <clears throat> let's get started so in the last class we uh, looked at one of the important properties that is um, if you look at the joint density of s1 s2 etc sn uh, in fact uh, this joint density um, turned out to be what lambda power n times e to the power minus uh, lambda sn right and the dependency on S1 through Sn is through this constraint, S1 less than S2 less than and so on less than Sn, okay? Um, now, I will we'll state a theorem which says the following, okay? So again, the usual stuff, we have a Poisson uh, arrival, uh, lambda, arrival with rate, rate lambda. Um, and uh, you look at the uh, PMF of uh, N of T, then if you look at the PMF of N of T, that is P N of T of N, that is the probability that N of T equal to N is lambda T over N E power minus lambda T over P, sorry, N factorial. And N is zero, one, etc. Okay. So now the question is, how do you prove this, right? Uh, how do you prove this? Yes. So how do you prove this? Maybe from uh, SN. Hmm? Hmm? So there is a relation between SN and NT. I mean, the two events, SN hmm? greater than T and NT less than N. There is some... Uh, Connection with SN and NT. I, I mean, from uh, we have derived from for SN, so maybe from that. So suppose uh, if I say N of T equal to N, what does that mean? N people has. Uh, uh, right, N, at time T, right? right? So zero to T, there are N individuals arriving here, right? So that means uh, if at all there is a new person arriving, that is the nth person, N plus oneth person arriving, it should be after T. Right? Do you agree? That's what uh, it says, right? So n of t equal to n is n people arriving in this. So when do you think is, let's see, I mean, I will not follow this book. Let's try a different approach now. Um, whatever we think based on discussion and then uh, we'll see whether we will get that answer, uh, the desired answer or not. So when do you think uh, n of t will be equal to n? Sn plus one is greater than t. Okay, so Sn plus 1 is greater than T. Uh, this doesn't mean that Sn is less than T, right? Right? Should what is Sn plus 1 greater than T? It says the N plus 1 arrival happens after T. That's all it's saying. It's not saying that N people have already arrived within the time interval of 0 to T, right? That is something that you have... That's what we want, right? This condition and Sn less than T. Okay, so and Sn less than or equal to T. Okay, this is something. Okay, what else? Anything, anything uh, uh, other than this that we will uh, be we want? Hmm? Yes. Okay. Now, what can you say about Sn plus one and Sn? They are not. Independent, do you agree? They are dependent. Hmm? So let's look at this. What is Sn plus 1? Sn plus Xn plus 1, right? And Sn, do you agree? This is what we have. 
right okay <clears throat> is that fine or no yes sir yes okay so now we need to find the joint density or joint distribution of this right so n of n of t equal to n essentially means that sn plus 1 uh, is greater than t and sn is less than equal to t this is what we have right is that fine okay so now uh, essentially okay let me write this probability of n of t uh, i don't know if we will be able to proceed with this let's try probability of sn plus xn plus 1 is greater than t intersection uh, yes as of this x like the interval times x and xn plus 1 whatever that doesn't depend on anything right that doesn't depend on sn i mean uh, doesn't depend on sn can you please repeat i didn't get the first part. i mean uh, that xn plus 1 does it depend oh. on sn no it doesn't right so what uh, is yes. xn plus 1 you start at sn and then you have a so basically uh, sample from an independent exponential distribution right i don't uh, care it uh it may be sn it may be from 0 to uh, i mean x plus 1 it doesn't matter so uh, i just independently draw it has got nothing to do with sn so uh, xn plus 1 is independent of sn that's something that we know okay is that fine uh yes sir so then then it is i think easy like uh, we can take a uh, value of sn and then uh acho it intersection okay okay uh -huh. continue sir continue okay what do you do now hmm? so i can write this thing right so x sn plus xn plus 1 i'll try this i don't know given sn less than or equal to t into probability that sn less than or equal to t right this is something that i can write okay is that fine okay now uh, condition on sn less than or equal to t you cannot do anything here right so now you are stuck because although you can say xn plus 1 is greater than something um it doesn't work that way do you agree yes sir hmm? now what do you do what is it that you have to do okay now let's look at another alternative uh, definition so what else can you uh, say Hmm? Can you uh, can you uh, move forward using this? S n plus x n plus one is greater than t. Given S n is less than or equal to t, into probability of this, right? So that's what we have. Okay. Now um, uh, what else? So uh, of course uh, this says that uh, I can write it in this way also, right? Probability of S n greater than t minus xn plus 1 and sn less than or equal to t right this is another th way of writing things do you agree now uh, is this correct or no this is sn one should be sn plus 1 or sn ah so what is this this is saying probability sn is greater than this but sn is less than this right that means t is greater than or equal to sn uh so the cdf of sn uh, yeah we can use the cdf of sn okay right this is what we have but what is probability of sn okay now this is also not enough right so i should see t greater than sn greater than t minus xn plus 1 given xn plus 1 is equal to some x right into the density of xn plus 1 and integrate right so what can be xn plus 1 it can be from 0 to infinity is this fine i can do this right no or s how many of you understood what i am doing here right hello yes sir uh, here the like t minus xn xn plus 1 you have written so there we should don't uh, we should write t minus a small x right Ah, now I can do that, right? In the next step, I can do this, right? So probability integral zero to infinity, probability t greater than or equal to s n greater than t minus x n. Okay, small x 
given xn plus 1 so xn plus 1 is independent of sn right so i can remove this do you agree all that i do is xn plus 1 of x dx okay is this fine i said can you explain the previous step uh, once like i understood but uh... ha huh. oh this this step are uh, you yes, serious sir, yes, sir okay yeah so okay so it's analogous to this right so what is probability of a i can write this as summation over all i equal to 1 to n probability of a given bi into probability of bi right when union over all i bi is entire set and bi intersection bj is null for all i not equal to j what is this called total probability total probability, total probability law all right so what is the analog for that well uh, analog would be this conditional times the density and you have to integrate instead of summation well um, sumit might object saying well this is a conditioning on a zero measure uh, event right zero probability event how can you condition on zero probability event? so the way you can interpret this is as follows so what you can do is this whenever this is i can do this right so i'll say it's between x and x plus delta and for this is a non zero probability event so i'll compute this and take the limit tending to zero okay so it turns out that both are same okay if you want to be mathematically rigorous okay sir we are conditioning over xn plus 1 here no sir yes so it is just because xn plus 1 has nothing to do with the sn for that like sir Correct. so you can you can no no but uh, uh, you cannot condition on uh, zero uh, probability event right yeah yes so what do you mean by that that's what i'm uh, no sir actually sir okay? just above this line sir mm. before you have conditioned on xn plus 1 mm. so there was no conditioning but uh, in the next line you have conditioned on xn plus 1 equal to x Hmm. So it is and just because the x plus the density also remember. Oh, x okay. yeah, yeah, density of x plus one. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, right. Hmm. Okay. So now, uh, how do you compute, for example, uh, this thing, right? So probability of s n greater than this thing. So how do you sir, compute this? Yes, sir. Uh, so can you tell why uh, this zero probability event was given? Ah, so for for example, what is probability of A given B? Probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Probability of B is greater than zero, right? Otherwise, uh, oh. this does not make sense. That's the oh. definition of conditional. Yeah. Yes. Whereas here, I'm conditioning on an event that is of zero measure. So one can object saying. if you are conditioning on a probability whose uh, you are conditioning on an event whose probability is zero then the conditional probability doesn't make sense right you can question that but that's why i'm saying so the interpretation is not like that its interpretation is through this okay. hello sir give me a small interval ha huh? yeah sir we can think uh, fx and uh, above above sir above ha huh. you can think uh, fx and uh, xn plus 1 of x dx as probability that xn plus 1 is in Correct. the range uh, dx small uh, dx yes yes exactly that's the point see again intuition intuition is this essentially says that if you have x you have a small interval around it of size let's say delta so this fxn1 of x dx is essentially the probability that xn plus 1 falls here well uh, whenever it falls here i'm going to approximate it by x but uh, when i make delta really small this approximation becomes really good okay is it fine y yes sir okay now let's move on so how do you find this guy right how do you find this guy the tds yeah so probability of <clears throat> this is t minus x greater than sn plus 1 which is greater than t is nothing but integral from t minus x to t <clears throat> right so it's sn i think huh sn Ah, yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, is greater than t. 
fxn fsn of t dt right so fn fsn of x dx so what is fsn of uh, x we have seen that right lambda power n t power n minus 1 e to the power minus not t x right i said x x power this minus lambda x over n minus 1 factorial right dx okay now what is this how do you compute this this is lambda power n divided by n minus 1 factorial integral t minus x to t x power n minus 1 e power minus lambda x dx now can you complete the proof what is this so what do you do now right what do you do i have i can substitute this here right so i can substitute this here and there will be a double integral assuming that you can interchange the integrals right i can take the integral with respect to x well i think i should be careful here so let me use something else man so i i don't want to use x i'll use y okay y okay is that fine so y so y and d by okay is this fine okay now what will be this integral <clears throat> so this integrand is of a gamma integration if we uh, uh, in, uh, change the integration zero to infinity like that uh, huh? well uh, that is true but uh, you cannot uh, do that here right because ah uh, yes t minus x to t so one can go from uh, zero to so Uh, t minus x to infinity. The other one should go to t to infinity, right? And subtract. Okay. So how do you solve this now? What do you think is the solution? Hmm? <clears throat> yes. What are the other things that we have? You have here e power. This is what lambda e power minus lambda x dx. right this is the exponential do you agree so this is the i have e power minus lambda x and this is with respect to x and x unfortunately we have it here right t minus x to t now what do you do what do you think is the uh, uh, solution to this hmm yes so what can happen to x x can be between 0 to infinity right so uh, uh, how do you how do you can you can you guys please try this integral what is it that you will get hmm? yes hmm can you try this integral Hey, you can do it by parts, right? What is this? Huh? Okay, let me do one more step. Get rid of this lambda y. So let's assume that. Uh, Sir, so it uh, will go on like like we have to apply the multiple times parts. I think. So. Exactly. So. Uh, so it will be lengthy. No, just try. What will be this integral? Y n minus one e power minus lambda y dy. Okay, I'll give you one more option. You have access to internet. Can you please try this online and see what will, what is the answer that you get? Okay, so let me simplify it even further. Lambda y, if I take it as yes, yes is equal to lambda y. Uh, whenever y is t minus x, it will be lambda t minus x, right? This will be this. Whenever y is t, it will be lambda t, right? And then. <clears throat> uh y will be what is s by lambda right so s by lambda so it will be lambda power n minus 1 is here okay so e power minus s that is lambda y dy is s by lambda so it will be n is here so they cancel and this is what you get right so 1 minus n minus 1 factorial lambda t minus x is lambda t Y n minus one e power minus y dy, 
right this is what we have okay is that fine yes sir okay now uh, can you try what the integral is it's from a to b integral y minus n minus 1 e power minus y it's a lengthy procedure so let's let's try this so what is uh, x power n e power minus x dx what happens to this first minus x n e power minus x uh, you are right it will go very lengthy right yes sir so let's go by multiplication so you go lengthy so let's look at a smart way of uh, solving this uh, is there any other way of solving this n of t uh, okay let's go back let's stare at this uh, uh, this two okay sn plus 1 is greater than t and sn is less than or equal to t then n of t equal to n right that is correct uh, uh okay okay so uh hello sir yes sir uh sir i mean the event in n of t equal to small n mm -hmm. uh, this event uh, can you not by some uh, uh, i mean in terms of excess like uh, interval times ha huh, so you can do it like this right so and okay let me try that also if that doesn't work then we'll stick to the book so n of t equal to n is i can write this as x1 plus x2 plus etc xn right is less than or equal to n right uh, i don't want to use uh, the nth arrival uh, is less than or equal to t sorry right but okay i'll call this as uh, okay uh, that's what i and x1 plus x2 plus etc xn plus xn plus 1 is greater than t right so this essentially boils down to the same Less thing than, uh, yeah same thing yeah. same thing right yeah so now the question is how do you find uh, n of t equal to n okay so now let's look at what are the implications of this this means that uh, sn plus 1 is greater than t right that's what it means right so the n plus 1 arrival is greater than uh, t and uh, uh, okay so this is not enough so it should be but let's assume that it also has appeared before uh, um, I have to think about this. How do we? Uh, I need to think about this. How do we? Any ideas, guys? So how do you do this? See the book uses order result. I don't want to use order result. I want to do exact. Uh, okay. So this, this, this time t. This is between this and this. Um, uh what uh, what can you say if uh, so for example n is uh, t is here and within the small interval there is an n plus 1 arrival okay so that means what sn is uh, between sn plus 1 is between this now if i shrink it then definitely uh, sn xn is less than this but that is not uh, correct actually Ah, uh, sir. Uh, what we are calculating? Can you uh, say once more? I mean, the PDF of this n t equal to n. Hmm. No, no, no. So 
if this happens right if there is an inter- arrival within a small interval right t and t plus delta okay if that happens then definitely n should be less than this right if you make delta smaller and smaller okay right uh, but that uh, again it goes to odd result so i just want to see what is the answer for this uh okay hey then we uh, of course in principle you can do it okay um find the integral of this okay so what will be the integral of y n minus 1 e power minus y i can write it as some sort of a summation right do you agree okay i'll write it like this okay let's try this okay i don't know a b y power n e to the power minus y dy right i can write this as g a to b y power n what is e power minus y j j equal to 0 to infinity y power j do you agree by j factorial right uh, sumit yes sir right this is what we have okay d y why am i saying d x d y okay what is this this is assuming that you can interchange the summation and integral which you can do in this case minus 1 power j over j factorial integral a to b y power n plus j right do you agree sir y y power n minus 1 i think no hmm? why is y power n minus 1 is that, is that what we have yeah, it's y power n minus 1 okay minus 1 okay now what is the answer here it will be summation j equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 power j over j factorial this will be y of n plus j divided by n plus j a to b right so this will be over all j equal to minus 1 power j over j factorial b power n plus j minus a power n plus j divided by n plus j right is that okay okay now yes, let's apply sir. this for uh, the our integral our integral would be what what is our integral it's from uh, lambda t minus x to lambda t y power n minus 1 e power minus y dy this is nothing but summation j equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 power j or j factorial okay what is b power nj now this b is lambda lambda is common i can take uh, lambda power n plus j okay now you have t power n plus j minus a would be t minus x power n plus j divided by n plus j is this fine i think we will get the answer okay. i think we should i mean it's interesting so now what is it that you have to do we got this right so we should take this uh, well uh, what is it that have to do there is a 1 over n minus 1 factorial that have to uh, factor in and substitute this here right now what is it that i want i want 1 by n minus 1 factorial okay and then anything else i have to factor in anything else yeah so this is the one right yeah 1 over n minus 1 factorial this times derivative okay so this integral will be integral from 0 to infinity okay then what do we, what do we have here you have summation j equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 power j or j factorial lambda power n plus j okay divided by n plus j right and then what do we have we have d power <laughs> uh do we have uh, t power n plus j and then uh, t minus x power n plus j okay minus t minus x power n plus j okay okay this times lambda 
e power minus lambda x dx. Okay, so I think we are almost there. Ah, now there is one more trick. So what is this? T minus x whole power n plus j. Hmm. What do you think is the answer? This is what summation binomial expansion, right? Minus one power k t power k x power n minus n plus j minus k, right? So k is from zero to uh, is it from zero? Yeah. So k is from zero uh, n plus j n plus j, right? Okay. Now what will happen if I take t n plus j, okay, minus t minus x whole power n plus j? What do you think is the answer? See, when k is zero, that's not true. When k is n plus j, what do we have here? Minus one power n plus j, right? Uh, sorry, t is when k is n plus j, t will be n plus j minus one power k n plus j. So that will be a constant term. Uh, this is slightly tricky now, right? Slightly tricky. Uh, okay, so one other. Uh, Guys, you have to think now. So, what do you think is the next step? What is it that you would do, Sumit? Sir, actually, if you if we calculate this difference, sir, mm -hmm. so I think we will not find anything because sir, there is a sign minus one to the power k. If you uh -huh. take k is equal to n plus j, then still we can't cancel t to the power n plus j, and this this thing, sir. So ultimately, we will get a no. Let's we'll just get addition of this t n plus j n plus j plus k. Sorry, minus k. Right? X power k. Okay. Now, what do you think? When k is zero, this is one, right? And t power n plus j. Mm. X power zero, yeah. so this cancels, right? So this yes, will be now you can cancel. Yeah. A equal to one to infinity. Oh, sorry, not infinity. N plus j. Yes. Okay. Minus Same one power k. X power k. T power n plus j minus k. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Now what is the next step? What do you do? See, there is an integral, and then I have to. There is a summation, right? So integral of infinite sum. When can I interchange the two? Okay, let me just do this. Okay. When the sum is finite. Uh, okay. Uh, L limit. Now, can you tell me the answer? Hmm? When can you interchange? You can interchange only when dominated convergence, right? Or monotone convergence, right? We have studied this, right? Yes, sir. Huh? For then we have to see the sequence, right, sir? Yeah, sequence is as a function of uh, j equal to zero to l. Hmm? That sequence converges to what? E power minus x, right? Yes, sir. We can okay. apply that. Okay. Now, what I will do is I'll blindly apply this. Okay. So uh, you have to make it rigorous. Uh, argue why I can interchange. So what happens then? So I have one by n minus one factorial. Okay. Summation j equal to zero to infinity minus one power j or j factorial lambda power n plus j or n plus j. Okay. Then integral, and then there is a lambda also because of this. Okay. Then we have what? We have summation over all k equal to one to n plus j minus one power k t power n plus j minus k, right? And then integral zero to x k plus one x k 
okay then e4 minus lambda x dx can you tell me the answer for this you are done what is the answer for this see lambda x i can take it as s is equal to lambda x so what will be d, uh, what will be uh, whenever i put zero i get zero infinity infinity nothing changes so x would be lambda s by lambda so there will be 1 by lambda power k that is one thing okay and s will be this will be x now what will be dx dx will be s by lambda so this will be lambda. Now, what can you say about this? Hmm? What can you say about this? It's gamma integration. Ah, what is gamma of uh, this thing? Integral no. x power k power minus x dx. Huh? Hey, come on, guys. You should tell me what the answer is. Okay. Huh? K minus one. Huh? No, gamma of n is what n minus one factorial, right? No. Yes or no? Uh, hello, sir. Sir, in gamma integration step. Ah. Huh. So it should be k minus two factorial. Infinity x to the power k minus one e to the power minus x dx. Ah, okay. So we have k minus uh, two factorial. Okay, so now we have k minus one, two. right? So if you have k minus one, there will be k. It will be k factorial, right? X power n minus one. Yeah, it will be k factorial. If we have k here, what do I get? K plus one. Oh. Ah, yes, sir. K factorial, sir. We get actually the gamma of k minus one, and that is a. Yeah. So what what do we have mm -hmm. here? So for example, x power n minus one, e power minus x dx is n factorial, right? So this will be, you are right. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Sir. Now what do you do? So you have to substitute that back and see what uh, whether we are lucky or not, right? That's what you have to do now. J equal to zero to infinity minus one four J over J factorial. Okay. So lambda power n plus J. So I can. Uh, sorry, lambda power n. I can. What happened? Lambda. Something is switched on now. Okay, lambda power n. I can pull that out, right? So we have lambda power n here. Okay. Now, uh, actually, lambda power n plus one because I'll also pull this guy out. Okay. So this will be lambda power j over n plus j. Okay. Uh, then summation k equal to one to n plus j minus one four k t power n plus j minus k into k plus one factorial, right? Is that correct? Divided by lambda power k plus one. Okay. Is that correct? Did I make any mistake? No, right? No, sir. Ah. See, uh, okay. Now, uh, so k plus one. Uh, so this is t power uh, j minus k. Ah. So now t plus power n plus j minus k. I'll do one thing. Okay. So I'll just remove this t power n plus j. Minus k. I'll just do this. Okay, t lambda power k plus one. What did we have earlier? T power n plus j minus k. Right. So we have k plus one here. So I should also multiply it by. Um, t, this will be to t power k, but uh, I should uh, multiply it by t here. Right. So we have t. Huh? Do you agree? So this will be t power n plus j plus one. Okay, is this fine? Okay, can you say something about this? Okay, now uh, what is it that you have to get? You have to get e power minus lambda t 
lambda t power n over n factorial this is the answer right okay now uh, can you show that this is equal to this lambda t power n okay power n divided by n factorial e power minus lambda t hmm i can i'll write one more step here so you can probably show that so i think we we are almost done so lambda power n plus 1 so see uh, this is lambda power j i cannot do anything with these things so t i can do so t the only thing is j here right so i can pull out t plus 1 here, uh, t power n plus 1 here right over n minus 1 factorial okay now we have summation j equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 power j over j factorial see lambda power j lambda p power j over n plus j okay then times this summation k equal to 1 to n plus j minus 1 power k k plus 1 factorial over p lambda power k plus 1 okay Huh. Hmm. We can also remove uh, remove hmm? t lambda from hmm? the thing. Hmm? We can remove one t lambda from this last summation. T lambda from uh, last summation, right? Yeah. And it will cancel right. lambda into power n. Yes, you are right. Lambda t power n. Okay. Lambda t power n. See, so you have lambda t power n. I can write this n minus n factorial as n factorial n here. Okay. Okay. So now all that you have to show is well, this is crazy. I mean, nobody does this, but uh, this entire thing is what t e power minus lambda t. Do you think it's uh, it's t e power lambda t? Hmm. So let's say by putting value. Uh. No, no, no. We should not do that. Uh, uh, what will be the case? So n plus j is the troubling term. So this this is somehow <clears throat> I should get something else. So what can you say about this this summation? So if you can somehow figure out that we are done. So n plus j minus one power k k plus one factorial divided by x power k so what do you think is this sumit so, have you ever seen such a an expansion huh? no sir no no sir in fact i was thinking to apply something series solution but still here this function is not only smooth as the variable lies in a denominator portion so uh e power see uh sir actually, e sir, sir one thing we can do we just can expand this because there is a finite sum no sir uh so then after multiplying with this coefficient then we can see the infinite sum of the each coefficients where it will go then maybe maybe we can yeah. do something like that okay so okay somebody else was uh, uh, suggesting something sir i think uh, this lambda lambda t to the power j and this lambda lambda t to the power k will get cancel once we multiply this coefficient yeah, with the so we'll get something sum. like so, yeah i think something like um, hmm. sir so what is, yes uh, sir like what we want is that uh, e power minus lambda t right So, if we see inside summation, uh -huh. minus one to the power j, lambda t to the power j divided by j factorial, and uh -huh. summation over that is the expansion of e power minus lambda t. Correct. Yeah. So, essentially, so we have to end. We are saying uh, minus one. Uh, so this thing, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. This thing. So basically, we have to eliminate the remaining two. That is one. Uh, one over n plus j. Uh, n over n plus j. Summation. This should basically be one or something, right? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yes, sir. Hmm. 
but uh, why did we get k plus 1 factorial i'm just worried about this k plus 1 factorial that's all why did we get k plus 1 factorial k factorial sir huh? no where k is that uh, it's, it should be k factorial yes sir no, no sir k k plus, k plus k. 1 right yeah it should be k plus 1 this is what we have right so this will be uh, k plus 1 factorial in the numerator Oh, no sir, sir. that right integral is uh, tau of n okay n minus 1 factorial yes sir factorial, yeah sir. Oh, okay fine so this is n minus 1 factorial so this is ah, k yes, factorial sir. so this k factorial where where all should i change this one will be k factorial okay this will be k factorial that's all okay so be k factorial okay so that means this will be k factorial so what k factorial divided by x power k Uh, minus one power k summation k equal to one to uh, uh, n plus k, right? So what 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 is this? Uh, can you say something about this? There is also one upon n plus j outside that, so it's kind of averaging, like we are summing and then averaging. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so that's what we are looking at. But will it be one? No, not one n. Uh, okay, let me think. So, so one over n, right? Then n n will cancel. Correct. Yeah, should get one over n the entire thing. That means n plus j over n is what I am looking for. N plus j over n. Uh, okay, so I can write this as summation minus one power k k factorial one by x power k some a power k. So when will you get such an expansion? Factorial in the numerator, you will never get, right? Okay. Okay, this is an interesting um, uh, formula, right? So, okay, what is it that we want? Let's let's write this. Okay. So, what is it that we want here? We want this to be. Okay, I'll just write one over n plus j also. This we need it to be uh, one divided by n. Huh? N, right? This is what we need, right? But uh, I really I don't know. So whether this will be the case. Um, so what is j here? I forgot. J. Hmm? What? So what is j uh, here? Uh, J is some term here, right? Because there is an uh, summation here. Oh, If it is one for all j, then we are done. One by n for all j, we are done. Hmm? I don't think this will be the case. Uh, lambda t power j or j factorial minus one power j. J is okay. This is fine. So, question. Um, hmm. What do you uh, k factorial times x power k? What is that? Uh, okay, let's look at only for uh, k equal to one to two. Okay, one by two, k equal to one to two. So if we have one, what do we have? Minus one by x, right? Two, two will be plus two factor is two by x squared, right? Is this fine? This is definitely not. One by n, right? It's not one by two. No, it's not. Uh, depends on x. Hey, why? Wh uh, what is x here? Hey, there should be some. Hey, some. Ah. Uh, hey, lambda. Okay, I goof. There is something. I think I goofed up somewhere. Otherwise, I'm hundred percent sure you should get the answer. I'm 
hundred percent sure we should get the answer. Ah, I have goofed up somewhere. Somewhere I have goofed up. Oh, did I take one one hour in my son? Yes, I took that. So this is fine. Hey, yeah, there should be some factorial, right? So where is that factorial? Uh, X power k t power n plus j minus k. Hmm. Seems to be correct. Everything seems to be correct. Sir, this finite sum will always depend on x. So, after multiplying this factor with the each finite sum, mm -hmm. means each term of the finite sum, then this infinite sum might some might give some good result. I think independent of x something, because sir, if you find this finite sum, then the x will be oh, always there. We will we will never get one by n, sir. I mean, sir, this lambda t will be there only. But uh, once we multiply this, then this lambda t and lambda t might cancel. And uh, where did you get this lambda t from? So it lambda is just here in the. Huh? So where did we get this one by lambda t from? Sir, by some some substitution here. Oh, this is one by lambda power k plus one. Why did we get this one by lambda power k plus one? I don't know. We took t outside, sir. So. Hmm. Oh, t is what? Oh, that is fine. T is fine. Uh, no, we had one by lambda power k plus one. Where did this come from? One by who? Hey, there is no one by lambda power k plus one, right? Where did we get this one by lambda power k plus one? So somewhere you have used the substitution. There, just uh, got this one. Okay. K plus one. Ah, okay. Maybe oh, no. It's minus k, right here. No, but where do we have lambda power k? Oh my God. Ah, basically, okay. It's because substitution e power minus lambda x. That's why it became, it got changed to this. That is fine. So this is t power k. That also became one by t. T power n plus j. Okay, this is what we had. Okay, otherwise what would have been the case? Uh, k equal to. Still you have factorial, man. So factorial should go. K factorial. What is this? Um, okay, summation k equal to one to uh, n k factorial x power k. Do we have anything like this? Two x minus x square by x cube. So x square. So this is one by two into two minus x by x square. That's what you get. Hmm. No, 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 no. Actually, but, sir, I think the that summation will not be finite, even sir, because huh? sir, there is a k factorial term, and if huh. you expand this one, so there will always be a k factorial term with this infinite sum. That is true, but you also have minus one for k, right? Minus one. Uh, oh yeah, alternating series. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so um. Uh, what I will do is, of course, the textbook uses the order result. Maybe we'll uh, do that. But can you guys do whatever I did? Um, follow all the steps and figure out whether uh, um, if I have booked up something and get the answer. Hmm? Okay, sir. We will try the same the same steps. Other? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You can try. Of course, yes, um, don't consider this to be a waste because. 
we took a different approach and uh, we have some some um, hopefully some uh, uh, interesting directions just try this okay try this and get back uh, next class anyway we will do this uh, pause on uh, thing so um, finish this and then we will move on to gaussian processes okay okay sir i thought of doing that uh, today but uh, yeah so we went in some direction so uh, that's okay i think uh, just figure out huh okay you yeah. okay sir okay. thanks thank you i'll stop here any questions no sir okay Hmm. Okay. Okay then. Uh, see you on.